Hi everyone, this is Sumedha and today I'm going to teach you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create this beautiful painting of Lord Shiva. I had so much fun creating this and I'm sure you will too. So let's get started. Okay, so we'll start by making the sketch first. I'm doing it on a rough paper because I did not record it while uh, doing it on the original canvas. I've not used any fancy material for the sketch, just a free pencil that I got from somewhere and Apsara eraser. I'm first roughly drawing a line at the center of the canvas. Next I mark the bindi portion that's slightly towards the upper part of the canvas. For the bindi start by making a shape that looks like a wide U and then just draw a line around that and mark a small circle exactly below it. Next make a semicircle shape for the eyebrows. After this draw a slightly curved elongated line from both the eyebrows and join it at the end this is the nose bone then we draw the nostrils by making two small horizontal lines on each side and draw the curved part of the nose Make the eyes just follow the line that you made for the eyebrow and try to create an oval kind of structure and you can draw a double line below the eye just to make it more realistic. Moving on to the lips area, draw a slightly curved upper lip and a separator line and then draw the lower lip. Make the upper lip look like a bow structure and the lower lip like a U. Following the marking of the lower lip, mark the chin portion and also the mirror image of the letter C to mark the dent on the chin. Next, I uh, mark the third eye just above the bindi and I also mark uh, the three lines around it. After this, I start with the hairline area that looks like a white wave. Join the ends of the hairline to the chin. This will mark the jawline and the cheekbone area of the face. Drawing the line really close to the eye and the eyebrow will ensure that the face structure looks uh, narrow and slender as a whole. Next, we draw lines on both sides of the neck. 
these lines start from the middle of the lip and go all the way to the end of the canvas. Next I draw two big oval structures that are sticking to the neck lines on each side of the neck. These are the earrings and I immediately draw ears above that. Uh, there's no need to draw the entire ear as most part of the ear will be covered by the hair. start by sketching out the hair um, as you can see the hair is not really straight but it has a lot of textures and layers and uh, I also add a bun on the top of the hair I'm also marking the Rudraksh beads on the bun and just next to that is the crescent moon and I'm marking a few lines on the hair um, that actually separate the portions of the hair but uh, that will be more prominent once we start with the painting and it will really be helpful uh, for separating the sections of the hair while we are painting. So just keep tweaking the facial features uh, until you are convinced with the final result of the sketch. After completing the final sketch, I have outlined the entire sketch with a dark shade of purple using the number 0 brush by Artichals Art Brushes. Uh, the reason I did this is because there will be a lot of layers of acrylic added to this painting and I want to be sure that I am able to see what I have drawn and it does not fade out below the layers of acrylic paint. outline is completely dried out I'm using this light portrait pink shade from Liquitex Basics along with some hints of cadmium yellow in the background for the sunset. It's okay if you don't have these shades you can cover the background entirely with primary yellow and we'll anyways be doing the background in the end so this is just the base coat. Next I'm using sky blue as the base coat to entirely cover Lord Shiva's face and we'll keep adding layers on top of this after it's completely dried. If you don't have this shade it's completely fine again. You can just mix a lot of white with any shade of blue that's available with you right now. After the base coat is dried I start with outlining the top layer of the bun with fallow blue and then fill the inner area with ultramarine blue 
leaving just a few patches as it is to make the base coat visible. I repeat the exact same process to the other layers as well and I even add shades of blue to the crescent moon. Next I add a layer of bond umber to the Rudraksh beads and then blend it with white while it's still wet uh, to give a highlight and also show its rough texture. I repeat the same process for all the beads on the bun and also on the neck portion. Next, I'm outlining the textures of the hair with fallow blue and for the inner areas and filling them with uh, combinations of ultramarine blue, fallow blue, uh, purple, sky blue and white. You can of course use any shade, any other shade of blue that you have and mix it with uh, white or black to give uh, different variations. So. I'm doing this to create variations and uh, make the coarse hair texture look more prominent. Uh, also while doing this be sure that uh, if you've used light shades of blue in the previous section of the hair uh, then you should use darker shades of blue in the next section. So doing uh, this will really help you define the textures of the hair, hair well. And uh, all you've got to do here is add layers and layers of different combinations of light blue and dark blue shades. Uh, and I'm also adding uh, white lines randomly in between uh, the hair sections so that they look more prominent. Moving on to the forehead, I'm highlighting the three lines of Bhasma using fallow blue and uh, filling the inner areas with uh, sky blue and white. Uh, I also add colors uh, to the third eye area. Uh, the colors that I'm using here are again uh, fallow blue and a combination of ultramarine blue and I add highlights of white to make it look like this. I continue adding variations of blue to the rest of the hair. Uh, now if you're wondering how I'm able to uh, get so many different shades of blue, honestly I've just mixed the colors uh, mentioned earlier in different proportions. I've just used those uh, four or five colors mentioned earlier and nothing else. So uh, just play along uh, with these colors and you've got to try out different combinations of them. Also uh, please be sure that you blend these colors quickly because acrylics uh, dry out too fast. And you can of course add the highlights after the base colors have dried. That's not an issue at all.
moving on i add a purple color to the bindi and i add white highlights over it i move on to coloring the forehead area for the topmost area of the forehead i am using purple diluted with a little water its consistency is almost like that of watercolor i am using purple as it's a dark shade and it will clearly define the separation between the hairline and the forehead then i apply a layer of phthalo blue with the same watercolor kind of consistency so basically i am applying the layers in this consistency to be sure that they don't dry up quickly and it will be easier for me to blend the colors well after that i take a good amount of sky blue on my brush and blend all these colors together i keep adding sky blue and keep blending the colors well until i see a smooth gradation up to the eyebrows I then color the eyebrow with phthalo blue and I repeat the exact same steps on the left side of the forehead. I've colored the nose with phthalo blue that's diluted with water as I did not want the nose to be too dark. For the under eyebrow, I apply a thin layer of purple color and blend it with phthalo blue giving it a good depth. Next I outline the eye using just plain phthalo blue that's it and uh, I keep the rest of the eye as it is just adding a bit of sky blue color I do the same on the left side as well I'm now adding color to the ear. For this, I've mixed phthalo blue uh, with a little bit of black to make a prominent distinction between the ear and the hair.
for the earrings i am again using phalo blue this time mixed with a lot of black um, it looks like black but it's not completely black rather it's the darkest shade of blue i have used in the entire painting For the lips, I start by outlining the entire lip area and also the chin dent. I fill the inner lips with diluted phalo blue and add a few highlights with white. I add a little bit of white to highlight the under eye area and blend it with sky blue and I paint the rest of the face with diluted phalo blue again. I make the hair next to the neck a bit darker so that we get a clear distinction between the hair and the neck. explaining uh, the painting of the neck area as I guess you've learned by now that it's the same process like the previous sections where you mix the shades of purple, phalo blue and sky blue together. So with this we are done with painting Lord Shiva's face. Now we'll start by adding shades of sunset in the background. For the background, I'm blending yellow, just a hint of magenta and white together. So I'm doing this layer by layer and I'm just using these three colors for the entire background. If you don't have magenta, it's okay, you can use red, but remember to just use a little amount of red as the focus should be on Lord Shiva's painting and not on the background. So if you use a lot of dark colors, dark and bright colors in the background, uh, the background will look much more saturated than uh, the actual painting that we are trying to focus on, that's Lord Shiva's face. So this is it guys, we are done and your final painting should look like this. So guys, if you've made it this far, I hope you really enjoyed the entire process of creating. Uh, I'm really excited and waiting to see your recreations. So do tag me with your recreation on Instagram and I'll definitely give you a shout out. Thanks for watching. Bye.